the da'wah Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave to groups leaders of the Quraysh dispute the da'wah Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave them Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radhiyallahu anhu narrates that it was after sunset when several leaders of the Quraysh gathered behind the Kaaba for a meeting among them were Utbah bin Shaybah the two sons of Rabi'ah Abu Sufyan bin Harb someone from the Abdiddar tribe, Abu al-Bakhtari from the Banu Asad tribe, Aswad bin Abdul Muttalib bin Asad, Zama'ah bin Al-Aswad, Walid bin Mughira, Abu Jahal bin Hisham, Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah, Umayyah bin Khalaf, As bin Wa'il, and Nabi, and Munabbah, the two sons of Hajjaj from the Banu Saham tribe. They decided to send someone to call Rasulullah to them in an effort to speak to him frankly and thresh out matters so that people would know that they had made every effort to resolve matters. Consequently, the message reached Rasulullah that the leaders of his people have gathered to speak to him. Rasulullah hurried to meet them, thinking that they had changed their opinions about him and were ready to accept Islam because he was always eager for their welfare, always desired that they be rightly guided and always distressed by their errant ways. When Rasulullah sat with them, they said, O Muhammad, we have sent for you so that people may know that we have done our best to persuade you. By Allah, we know of no other Arab who has distressed his people as you have done. You have insulted our forefathers, blasphemed against our religion, made our luminaries seem foolish, abused our gods and disrupted our unity. In fact, you have done everything possible to spoil relations between us. If it is wealth that you want by propagating your message, we shall accumulate wealth to make you the wealthiest person amongst us. If it is honor that you want, we shall make you our leader. If it is kingship you aspire for, we shall make you our king. If you are doing this because you have been afflicted by evil spirits that have overwhelmed you, then we shall spend all our fortunes until you are cured or until we grow helpless in finding a cure for you. Rasulullah replied, I aspire for none of the things you have mentioned. I have not brought to you what I have brought, the message of Islam, in search of your wealth nor to attain honor of or king, kingship. However, Allah has sent me as a messenger to you. Allah has revealed a book to me and commanded me that I convey glad tidings to you should you accept Islam and warn you at the same time. I have therefore conveyed to you the messages of my Rabb, and I have given you sound advice. If you accept what I have brought to you, you shall be fortunate in this world as well as in the Akhirah. On the other hand, should you reject this, I shall wait for the decision of Allah when He decides matters between myself and you people. After listening to him, the leaders of the Quraysh said, O Muhammad, since you would not accept any of our proposals, you know very well that there is no city more restricted than ours, no nation poorer than us, and none who live lives more difficult than ours. Therefore, ask your Rabb who has sent you to move from us these mountains that have restricted us to expand our city to cause rivers to flow like the rivers of Sham and Iraq and in addition to this ask him to bring back to life our forefathers who have passed away amongst these he should bring back to life Qusay bin Kilab because he was a pious person where we 
shall then ask him whether you are truthful in your claim or not. If you fulfill all that we have asked you, and if our forefathers verify what you say, then we shall believe you and acknowledge your status with Allah. We shall then acknowledge that Allah has sent you as a messenger as you claim. In response to this, Rasulullah said, I have not been sent for this reason. I have been sent to you people with that which Allah has sent me for and I have already conveyed to you that which Allah has sent me with. If you accept it, you shall meet good fortune in this world as well as in the next. On the other hand, should you reject this, I shall patiently await the command of Allah when He decides matters between yourselves and me. The Mushrikeen then said, If you do not wish to do this, then at least do this for yourself, that you ask your Rabb to send an, an angel to verify what you say and give answers on your behalf. You should ask him, also, to grant, your, to grant you orchards, treasures, and palaces of gold and silver by which you would become independent of these things we assume you are hankering after because you, mere, you merely stand in the marketplaces and earn a living just as we do. If you do this, we shall acknowledge you, your highest standing in the sight of your Rabb. This you would ha do if you are really a Nabi as you claim. Rasulullah said to them, I shall not do this. I am not one to ask my Rabb for such things, and I have not been sent to you for this reason. However, Allah has sent me as a bearer of glad tidings and, and as a warner. If you accept what I say, you shall meet good fortune in this world as well as in the next. On the other hand, should you reject this, I shall patiently await the command of Allah when He decides matters between yourselves and me. The Mushrikeen then said, In that case, cause the, sky, the, cause the sky to fall on us, as you claim your Rabb is able to do if He pleases. We shall never believe you unless you do this. Rasulullah said to them, That is left to Allah. If He wills, He would make it happen. They said, O Muhammad, did your Rabb not know that we will be sitting with you and asking you for these things? Could He not have informed you earlier about the questions we will be asking and the replies you ought to be giving? Could he not have told you what he would do with us if we refused to accept what you say? The news has reached us that you have learnt everything you say from a man in Yamama whose name is Rahman. By Allah, we shall never believe in Rahman. O Muhammad, we have placed everything before you without leaving anything unsaid. By Allah, we shall never leave you alone and will keep seeking vengeance for what he and you had done to us. Eventually, it will be us who will finish you off, or you who will finish us off. Thereafter, one of them said, We worship the angels, who are the daughters of Allah. Another said, We shall never believe in you until you bring Allah and the angels all before us. When they had said this, Rasulullah stood up and left them. His cousin by the name of Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah bin Mughira bin Abdullah bin Umar bin Makhzum, who was the son of Rasulullah paternal aunt at the Atika, also stood up with him and said, O Muhammad, your people presented to you what they had to say, but you refused to accept any of their proposals. Thereafter, they asked you for some things they required by which they could recognize your high status in the sight of Allah. But you refused 
to do even this. Eventually, they asked you to hasten the punishment about which you had been warning them. I swear by Allah that and that I shall never believe in you until I see you set up a staircase leading to the heavens, climb it and return with an open scripture together with four angels who would testify that you are as you claim you are. By Allah, I think that I would not even believe you after you do this. He then turned away from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, leaving Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to return to his family in a state of sadness and dejection, because not only was his desire for them to accept Islam left unfulfilled, but because he noticed that they were drifting further from him.